brethren, we have had two days of preaching the gospel, and then we just had Brother Boyce, who is one of the most excellent preachers I've ever heard, stand up before you. Are you rejoicing today? Yeah. Now we know that feelings go up and down. We know that you'll have your high times and your low times. But I'm talking about are you rejoicing today? Like the, the deep down in your bowels, like Brother Paul talked about, do you have joy? The joy that passes all understanding today. Because Circumstances, they're going to change. You, you could be on a high, high mountain feeling great. Everything's going well for you. And just what, within a minute, you can hear some, hear some bad news. Bad news. And it'll drop you. You think nothing, nothing can bring me down. And you hear something bad and it just drop you. Well, brethren... We got some good news to talk about that is better, that surpasses circumstances. We got good news to talk about, good tidings, that it doesn't matter what happens. When you're focused on this good news, like our brother Boyce just talked about, where's your focus at? If you're focused on the world, well, it, it won't take you long that you will just be, just turn to mush. But we're talking about a good news that it goes beyond circumstances when you're focused on it. So we're talking about, my text is Philippians 1.17. And Paul says, I am set. I am set for the defense of the gospel. He couldn't do that, focus on his circumstances. You would never know what Paul's circumstances were. He, wouldn't he had to tell you what his circumstances were. He had to tell you that he was stoned and beaten, left for dead. He had to tell you. He didn't say this because he was, he was pridefully showing, look what I have done. He had to explain to you what he had gone through because his focus was on the gospel so much that he cared less about himself. He really did not care. It wasn't just like a prideful thing. I don't care about myself. I, no, that, that's not what Paul, he really was focused on the gospel. It really changed him. And he had a desire for it to change God's people. He really had a love for God's people because of the, the love that Christ had for him. He really was changed. But this is what the gospel does. The real gospel, the real true gospel changes people. When you hear the real gospel and that's what you're focused on and you know that this is why Paul says, I am set. Because I know what the false gospel can do to a man. I know what the real thing can do. But I also know what the false gospel can do. For that, I am ready to preach the gospel. And in other, we see where Paul said before, he said, I, I'm, I'm ready to preach. But here he's talking about, I am set for the defense of the gospel. Because once I have preached it, I know we have an enemy that's ready to come and steal it from you. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's all he cares about. All he cares about is victory against God. Satan, from the beginning, he was rejoicing that he was able to get Adam and Eve to turn their back on God. This was a victory for him, he thought. And then when Jesus was up on the cross, you know he was rejoicing then too. Because again, he's victorious. His great wisdom has turned men from God. And their last, this was their last chance. 
He knew it. He knew who Jesus was. The demons knew who Jesus was. And they're, they're finished now. I have taken the king and I have put him on the cross. And he is finished. You have no more hope, mankind. You have nothing to rejoice in anymore because I have just destroyed your king. My great wisdom. We see God's wisdom was much greater. Brethren, we do have hope. We can rejoice. We can have, knowing that we do have victory in Christ Jesus. Nothing can take that away from us. Nothing. They can take away this physical Bible. They can take away our freedom in the world. But they can't take away our salvation in Christ Jesus. That's the good news, brethren. That's the gospel, that we are going to be with our God. We are going to be with our God. Amen. As long as we focus on the true gospel of Jesus Christ. This will set you free to the point that you don't care what happens to you in the world. It's good, really good news. We're not talking about good news that's just going to build you up and make you feel good. It's real good news. It's reality, brethren. See, the world, they'll give you what they say is good news, but what they do is, and they're very good at it, is they'll be able to build somebody up and crush them. They do it every day. They'll take somebody and use them for their purposes and destroy them. That's not to what God's doing here. See, they're living in a fantasy world. We're talking about reality. We're not talking about a feel-good thing here. We're talking about a reality that Jesus Christ did die for us. That he is really right now on the right hand of God. That he is really right now preparing, he's preparing a place for us. That you are, not that you will be, that you are in Christ, free from sin. Everything, brethren, here is temporary. It's all going to pass away anyway, so we can let go of it now. I have been very blessed to be able to let go of temporal things. God gave me the opportunity through the t tornado to be able to see what happens when everything is taken away. Now, I didn't go through what Job did. He lost his family, too. But I did get a little bit of taste of that. And I was able to rejoice that the Lord was able to show me, you don't need these things. So we can let go of them today. We can let go of the things of the world today. The world says, no, hold on to it. Get what you can and hold on to it. Hold on to it for what? What, are you going to live? Forever in these temporal bodies? Are you going to enjoy the temporary things for eternity? You're going to let go of it. We let go of it now. The gospel can do this for you. When you see the gospel, the true gospel, for what it is, that Christ did die for us, it will leave you rejoicing. It won't leave you the same as you did before. It will leave you rejoicing Going on your way rejoicing that you can see that I have an eternal life with my God, my creator. But if the gospel is rejected, if you have gotten a hold of a false gospel that's not real, that's not reality, and we know Satan is very good at this, you have no hope. You have nothing but rejection from God. That's why it's so critical. See, people say, oh, why are you so critical? Why are you so quick to judge? Because it's so critical, that's why. Because this is, we're not talking about whether or not you're going to be able to be a member in the Lions Club here. We're talking about being with God for eternity. That's critical. 
and I'm going to be critical about it. Set for the defense of the gospel. It shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, Matthew 10, 15. I shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment, Matthew eleven twenty two. Does it sound does that sound bad? I tell you why it sounds bad, because it's bad. The men of Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Matthew 12, 41. What did they repent of? Because Jonah had good news? They repented at bad news. We have good news now. Is it going to go well for those who reject the good news after Nineveh did not reject bad news? It's not going to go well. That's why this is critical. We're not talking about something that will happen. Jesus has already come. He's already died. He's already gone to be the, with the Father, and he's already waiting for us. He will return. Some of the brethren and I were talking about this. It's not going to be with one of those little horns that you have at a birthday party where you go, Boop. it's a great trump will sound. You're not going to have time to rethink this thing. You're going to be ready when that trump sounds, and it could be today. Last night, I was waking, I was woke up. My wife and I, Nikki, were woke up by this great thunder. And it was, I don't know if I've ever heard, heard thunder like this last, the way I had last night. But I was waking out of my sleep. I didn't have time to do anything. The thunder's already here. I'm already saying, what is that? That's the way it's going to be when a trump sounds. You're not going to have time to think, was it a false gospel that I've been following this whole time? I don't know. I really haven't taken the time to, to think it out. I really haven't. I've been so busy. I've got my job and my family, and i got to go to the, world, the roller barn on Fridays. I just don't have time. To think this out. Does it sound ridiculous? Because it is. When we're talking about eternal things and some of the people, the, the things that they spend themselves for, the, the time that is wasted on things that are going to pass away, shame on those who spend their time wastefully. Shame on those who do not spend their time to know what their true gospel says. Well, I'm not a paid professional preacher. How am I to know? This is good news we're talking about here. We don't have time to talk a lot about the foolishness of the world. This is a time for us to be serious. Christ has already come. The world we know is up and down. They don't live in reality. This is reality. And it's refreshing. It's refreshing to the soul. To those who desire truth. When we go out in the world and all you can do is scratch your head and say, how could this be? And then we come and see the truth and what God is doing and know that he has chosen you. Oh, it's refreshing to the soul. It's refreshing to a weary soul. The gospel is good news. It brings joy to your heart. We have life. We are justified. We will be glorified. In Christ, we are pleasing to God. It's what God has done, not what we have done or what we are doing. It's what he has done. It takes a lot of pressure off you when you see the gospel for what it really is. And not the lies that are being portrayed out there. What, what really could you have done about this? When Jesus was going to the cross, before you were born, what 
choice did you have? It wasn't up to you. It was God who chose you. God is sovereign. He has already determined what is. And this cannot be altered. Men can scream and kick and shout to have their way, but it changes nothing to God. So I ask you, brethren, today, do you believe? Believe God and you are justified. Stop believing and you're out. So let the joy of the Lord swell up in you. Because we know death will come or Christ will come. One of those is going to happen. And when it does, will you be ready? Are you preparing? Are you looking for the return of Christ? Or are you like most of the world, a good portion of the any way that I see today, who are doing anything and everything they can to forget that they're going to die? Anything and everything they can to forget that Jesus is going to return. They'll do so, they go to the extreme so much so that they'll make up a whole new creation by saying that we, we evolved from slime. <laughs> and we have figured this out because we're so smart and wise in of ourselves. But the truth is they're doing anything and everything they can to not to focus on God. Not to know the true gospel, to know what God is doing, because that makes them comfortable in their sin. The world has nothing in the area of hope and joy to offer anyone facing the fact that we all are going to die, and we're all going to stand before God in judgment. Who here can say they're not going to die? I don't even know if I'm going to make it through this sermon. And that's fine with me. I could go all the way home rejoicing today. And my family and friends and those who my brethren can rejoice. They may miss me, but they know they're going to be with me soon. They may miss me if I'm gone, but the joy and hope that we have is we're all going to be gathered together. We're all going to be one body in Christ. What does the world have? They have no hope. But this is why flesh looks to distractions. Oh, we'll take a gospel, but just give us one that makes us comfortable in our sins. Just give us one that will give us an excuse for why we live for ourselves. Give us anything, but don't give us the truth. But it is, it is fact. It is fact that God himself has provided a way that we can be with him and avoid the separation or being damned. That we can avoid being worthless for eternity. To be with our Father in heaven. To be with our, the one whom we love, Jesus Christ. God's people can live in an arena of facts. They don't have to. They don't have to be caught up in lies, which Paul knew would happen. That's why he said early on here, right from the get-go, He's set for the defense. Why would you be set for the defense of something that's not ne needed to be defend defended? It had to be defended. People's souls were on the line here. We're not talking about something, something that man has to achieve, but what God has done. God is our focus. The gospel is all about God, what he's doing. Hey, it takes pressure off you when you can see it that way. Amen. See, you're, you, this is the master stroke of the devil. What he does is he shifts the focus from God, and he'll bring a gospel to you that's not a, the real gospel, one that puts everything on you. 
And it's so heavy that it crushes you. It's so heavy that I have seen people who came in strong that I don't even know where they are today. What happened? Well, they, they bought into a lie. Does God have requirements for his people? Oh, yes, he does. He does have requirements for his people, but that's not the focus. Once you are rejoicing and seeing what God has done, the true gospel, it will, it, will, it will make you want to do something. That's what it does. You don't have to muster up this, well, I'm going to pull up my bootstraps now today. That's not what the gospel does. Not the true gospel. The true gospel, it makes people want to do something. We've seen it. We know this to be true. If we stop talking about what God has done and we put the focus on what we must do, we run out of gas real quick. We may start off strong, but quickly we just run down. We have very little strength in what we can do. Now, there are some there's some that have more than others. I'll agree with you on that. But if I have enough gas to get me halfway to Florida and my intention is to make it to Florida, who cares if somebody else has a bigger tank and they make it more than halfway? We're going all the way to glory, brother. And we can't do it on our own. The power is in the gospel. Set for the defense, Paul says. As good as the gospel is, you've got to be able to not only see it, but to hang on to it and continue to live in it. To continue with it. Because we do have an enemy. Paul didn't say fight the good fight of faith because there's nothing else better to do. We have to fight the good fight of faith because we do have an adversary, someone who is really against us. Someone who does want us destroyed. And he's very good at making it look like, hey, I got what you want. Follow me. He doesn't come like some evildoer. He comes as a sheep. One who wants to, hey, I'm here for you. I care about you. So you see, if we don't know the true gospel, how easily you will be devoured. How easily you will be deceived. The world's wisdom will continue to push against the gospel. Just mention the name Jesus and see how well those who are in the world will accept you. I've tried it. I remember when I first became a believer, I didn't understand what everything I was up against, and I was rejoicing and excited about the word of God, and I couldn't wait to share it because if everybody just if everybody could just hear this, they would just love it like I do. I found out, brother, and that's not the case. We, we have people out there that want to tear apart what God has done. And Satan's working through them. So you have to know the truth. You can't depend on, like our brother boy said, you can't depend on someone to go out and get it for you. We do have, in this room, we, we do have... Brothers and sisters who do gather the manna and share it with one another. But it doesn't work for you to depend on somebody to bring it to you. We must gather the truth together. But we're all in it together. It's not one person doing it. It's all of God's people. Or else you'll, you'll soon be, you'll run out of strength. You heard the gospel.
gospel yesterday you were rejoicing, you must continue in it today. You must be ready to fight for it. If you're not going to fight for it, you're going to lose it. You will not hold on to something you're not willing to fight for. There is only one true gospel. You say that and you will be attacked. So you, if you don't know what you stand for, and you, when you're under attack, you will crumble. You've got to be ready to fight and know what you're talking about. Because the gospel will be under attack. What are you talking about? You, are you saying there's going to be some people that are going to, that aren't going to get to heaven because they have bought into another gospel? That's exactly what I'm saying. You're not going to, there is no other gospel. There is no other way to glory. Jesus Christ is the only way. There's not different roads that all lead to the same place. This is a lie from the devil. If it is true that God loves us and that we do not need his righteousness, did Christ die in vain? What is, was it all for naught? No, brother, Jesus did have to die for us. We do need God's righteousness. We cannot be accepted on our own. Without Jesus, we are damned. We have no hope. This was the wisdom of God, which was hidden from the world, hidden from the princes of this world. If they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 8. But Jesus was crucified. He did die for our sins. He did it. Today we continue to defend the gospel against all who would want to twist it and pervert it. Because we only have one true gospel. When exposed to the gospel, it does lead people to God. The true gospel I'm talking about. It leads people to God to believe that now we are able to say no to sin. If someone says they believe in the gospel and they continue in sin, they have believed a false gospel. The good news sets us free from the bondage of sin. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Well, shall we, brethren? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Romans 6, 1 through 2. When we see Jesus... Sin's the last thing we want to do. When we see the gospel for what it really is... We don't want to have anything to do with the world or sin. We hate it. We are buried with him by baptism into death. How? When was the last time you seen a dead man walking around sinning? We now walk in the newness of life. And we can rejoice while we're doing it. See, the world has, it's not even reality, brethren. It's not even reality. The world has nothing to offer. They say, come follow me out. You really want to be happy? You want to be rejoicing? Come follow us. We've got the answer. And many do. And they end up committing suicide. They end up at the nearest psycho ward trying to evaluate what's wrong with them. We are free from sin, free to love and believe God. Now we are waiting and we are preparing for Christ's return. You see how the gospel, it may, 
You don't have to tell somebody, you need to, you need to do this. You got it. I need to straighten up. The gospel straightens you up. You bring somebody and you preach the gospel to them and you show them that they, you can say, you can say, now you can say no to sin. <laughs> it changes people's lives. Acts 8.26, remember we read about <clears throat> Philip, an angel came of the Lord, spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is the desert. And what did Philip do? Ooh, I'm doing a good work right here. He arose and went. It wasn't his idea. This is, I'm talking about God. I'm talking about we, we serve a God that doesn't want anyone to perish, but have everlasting life. So he sends Philip to this eunuch to preach Christ. And here's my point about this. When he preached Christ to him, it says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. There was an effect. The true gospel has an effect on someone's life. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Who's talking about being baptized? When you see the truth, when you see the gospel for what it is, it makes you want to do for the Lord. It doesn't make you question or argue, be argumentative. Should, do I have to? Ah, okay, if I have to. That's not what the gospel does. When you see that happening, someone has preached a false gospel. Someone's let, grabbed a hold of a false gospel. He says, And Philip said to him, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered him and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot, to stand still. And they went down both to the water, both Philip and he, the uh, eunuch, and he was baptized. He was baptized. He baptized him, and when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught, caught away Philip. Then the eunuch saw him no more. And what did he do, brother? He went on his way rejoicing. That's what the gospel, that's what the true gospel does. It doesn't leave somebody dry and worn down and, oh, do I have to? I don't know if I, it leaves you rejoicing. This wasn't a, just a good feeling, brethren. This was, he knew that he was accepted. He was, he was accepted by God. He was well-pleasing to God. That's what the true gospel does. It makes you acceptable. It makes you know that you're acceptable. Who doesn't want to be acceptable? We want to be acceptable to God. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Romans 1.16. Because he knew that Christ made him acceptable, well-pleasing to God. He wasn't worried about what men thought of him. Paul wasn't worried about what men thought. He was more worried about what God thought. Because of the gospel, God was pleased with Paul, and he'll be pleased with you. He is pleased with you because of Christ Jesus. We are pleasing to our God because of Jesus. Uh, we know that this doesn't set well with Satan at all. And he's, he's holding nothing back. 
to twist and pervert the gospel. He's doing everything he can to pervert what God has done. All the way to the garden, we look back to see where Satan started his attack. And he is good at making it look like he is helping men to get them the advantage. But Satan does not give anyone an advantage. We already have the advantage, brethren, in Christ. We don't need what the world has to offer us. We've got everything we ha need in Christ Jesus. One way to check to see if you have the real deal. Do you love the brother? Do you? Because if you do, you know Christ is working in you. Because he laid his life down for the brother. The ones who love the truth and not themselves. These are the brethren. <laughs> they love the truth. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. 1 Peter 1.22 <laughs> That happens when you have Christ. It just happens. The real gospel produces a love for one another. When we're preaching the real gospel, we love one another. Fake or another gospel will bring strife and division. Where you see strife and division going on, where you see a brother, I'm not talking about you having an argument or a disagreement or sometimes we, we get tired or whatever. I'm talking about our true love. See, the, the world doesn't know what love is. The world is like, you're not being nice to me today. You don't love me. That's not love. But if you don't have this true gospel, sin will break out. When you see sin breaking out, it's because a false gospel is being preached. It's because flesh is being the focus. It's because someone isn't set for the defense of the gospel. Someone doesn't know the true gospel and they're not willing or, or they're not willing to defend it because of self-centeredness. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You brethren have already answered that. It's not even possible for those who are following Christ. The gospel teaches us that Jesus died for sin. Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were also baptized into his death? Why would you want to continue to sin? Sin is not reasonable to, one, to those who are looking to Christ. To someone who is embracing a true, the true gospel, sin is unreasonable. Some say that we believe in God, but they continue in sin. I don't know what they're believing in, brethren, but it's not the true gospel. I don't know what they're, who their God is, but it's not the creator of all. They may be believing in a God, a wooden God, one that they have made up, a fallacy, something that they have made up that's not a reality in their own minds, but it's not the true God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And it does change men. It will bring you close to God so that you hate sin. It is powerful if you embrace it. It's wonderful. You can rejoice and say, I confess that I serve God and not mammon. Matthew 6, 24. With joy in your heart, brethren, you can say, I hate my life. Luke 14, 26. See, the world knows nothing about this. 
to hate your life. How can you say that? You, gotta, you can't love anybody if you don't love yourself first. No, I love the brethren because I hate myself first. <laughs> it's, so, it's so upside down. The world has got it upside down. Satan has perverted this and twisted it so bad. But we have the truth in the gospel. Paul says, I am set for the defense of the gospel. It means he has rejected the world, he's rejected the wisdom of the world, and he's embraced the wisdom of God. Amen. He's embraced reality. The world does not live in reality. The, it, you don't have to go far to find out that facts really don't mean anything to the world. Give them something that makes them feel good for one second and they'll believe it. That's believers want something that's going to last for eternity to bring them to God. The world will reject you and will hate you, but Jesus said, hey, that's okay. The world will hate you because it hated me first. John 15, 20, 15 18. So, brethren, we can rejoice. The gospel is more important than what the world thinks of us. The gospel is more important than what the world is doing. Let them, let them do what they want to do. Let us rejoice in the truth. Let us rejoice in facts. Let us rejoice in reality. It's what God thinks that matters to his people. Amen. Thank you, brethren.